All right, g'day folks, Rod Moore from Moore Art School with you again. Thanks very much for joining us on our live stream painting class or watching the replay afterwards if that's what you're doing. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're going to do a great little painting. Um, it's this little painting that I've already done here. We're going to do it today. This originally was done in oils. Today we're going to do it in acrylics just to show you how easy it can be to actually you know, do a painting like this using acrylics. So you don't have to use oils all the time. You can use acrylics if you want to. Or maybe if you're starting out, you might find acrylics a little bit easier. So this is the painting we're going to do. I'll just bring it up here a little bit closer for you. Um, it's just a little wood scene. We've got some big sort of gum trees here, and then we've got this misty, foggy sort of setting in the background. Um, it's a really simple painting to do. So um, we're going to use the more method of painting to show you how to actually do that painting. Let me pop it over there. Um, there's not a lot to this painting. So even if you've never picked up a brush before, you can have a go at this one and um, you will enjoy it if you follow these steps, right? It's going to be a lot of fun. So um, what I'm going to do is just put out our colours. So I've got a 16 by 20 canvas, okay? Um, and I'm just using, what's this, Artelia Interactive Artist Acrylics. So we're going to start off with Ultramarine Blue. And we are going to use also Titanium White, okay, for the first part. So what we need to do is get all that background foggy looking... There are trees and things, I don't know if you can see that there, these big trees and things in the fog. All right, so that's the first step for us, getting those in. We're gonna keep our palette really limited. So, now the thing I've found with acrylics, that titanium white looks gonna slide off there. The thing I've found with acrylics is, you can use them just like oils, um, if you use enough paint, okay? The problem a lot of people have with acrylics is, they tend to dry too quickly. Yes, they do, but if you use enough paint, then no problem, okay? So, we're going to start off with ultramarine blue, titanium white. We will add alizarin crimson and yellow ochre. They're our three base colours for doing 90% of our painting here at Moore Art School. Um, so, first step in the Moore method of painting, get some paint. And we're just going to draw in the big shapes, okay? I always start out teaching my students drawing the big shapes. Now, if you look at that, there's a lot of different shapes there, right? But the main ones are this line here, this background hill, this foreground hill, and these three trees. That's all you have to worry about in this step. Um, keep it simple, right? I'm all about making it as simple as possible. Three colours, three brushes, three steps in the more method of painting, right? So, we'll get some paint there. I'm just using a little flat brush and... We're going to bring our main hill, um, comes in roughly around about there, like so. And our background hill comes in around about there, like so. So notice that I'm a bit over the third mark there, um, just a little bit, right? So I want to try to keep this foreground area to the one third mark there. And we will then add in big tree number one is going to be around about there. Okay. I'm, I'm not too worried about getting this just right at the moment. Um, I'm just show, I'm just putting these marks here really to show you. If I was doing this myself, I wouldn't even bother putting these in at this stage, okay? Because um, we can come and put them in later. And then this one is going to lean, just slightly lean into the painting. Okay, we don't want trees leading out of the painting, we want them leading into the painting. Why? Because that keeps the eye in the picture, right? Now, that's all I would do, step one, drawing our big shapes. Really simple, right? So what I'm using at the moment is what I call the more method of painting. It's a way I started teaching my students in my classes that I found really effective because it simplified everything down. Didn't have to be a great drawer, to do what I've just done there, right? You can do this at home. Because um, I'm using acrylics, make sure I get that in the water, because um, it will dry out. So, pop that in the water. And if you are joining us today, just let us know where you're joining us from, um, how you found us and so on, what your experience is with painting. Feel free to ask any questions as well. And if you're new to More Art School, uh, make sure you drop by our website, moreartschool.com. That's M O O R E artschool.com um, and if you click on the link that says uh, live stream painting you can add yourself to our notification list and you'll get notified about when we do our live stream painting um, 
like this one. Right. <laughs> so you can join us live and ask questions. So, step one, done. Really easy, right? Step two, what we're going to do is work on this misty background. Now, all that is is just blue and white. So we want a lot of white, okay? So I said before that if you're using acrylics and you want to do it like, you want to use it like oil paint, then the key is to use lots and lots of paint, okay? And that buys you drying time. Whereas with oils, you've got plenty of time. Okay, so let me just put some of this paint on here. I'm not gonna worry about my marks on my trees um, because I know where I'm gonna put them. I've got a reference, so that's no problem, okay? So what we wanna do is just get this paint on. And normally when I do a sky, I do a gradation, dark down the light. Because we're doing a foggy sort of scene, I don't think it really matters um, that much. So I'm not going to fuss too much with worrying about getting the sky just right. Okay. I'm just going to basically get the paint on. Really simple step. I'm using a big gesso brush. Generally, I use a one inch gesso brush. This is a three inch, I think. Why am I using a three inch today? Well, I've got this big area to cover and I don't want to fuss with it. Okay, so. My attitude is, let's just get the paint on there and um, get our background setting done. Okay, you can see how much paint I've used, and that is the key. If you want to use acrylics like their oils, then you need lots and lots of paint. And when I see my classes, when I teach art classes and workshops to my students, so I put out little piddly piles of paint, and um, then they struggle, right? Why do they put out little piddly piles of paint? I think they're worried about the cost of it, you know? Like, if you're worried about the cost, get student quality. Now, these are Atelier, these are a good brand, right? You can do professional painting with these. Um, but if you're worried about the cost, get yourself a student brand. Um, let me have a look here. This one here, Dimension, right? This is um, Art Shed Online, where you get these, Montmart. These are a great little student quality um, acrylic and they're cheap and you can therefore use lots of paint. See how much paint I've got on there? Really important. Okay, now don't talk too much, Rob, because we're doing acrylics today. <laughs> and I won't have much time. Okay, let's just scrub that on. Um, streaming to you live from beautiful Noosa and uh, the climate up here is warmer than where I used to live in Melbourne. So, um, Things dry out quickly. Okay. Get in there like that. Now, what I think I will do is I will just, if I've got, hopefully the paint's still wet enough, we'll just work up into those corners. Darker corners brings the eye into the center of the painting. Little trick I learned from Len Hen. G'day Len, if you're watching. Just using a bit of an X crisscross sort of shape there, or brush stroke rather. And see how fast that's drying out. Oh, that blew out of my brush. So it's almost dry now. <laughs> Except for that bit where I just put the paint up there. Okay, so I just soften it all out. Okay, so all we're doing at the moment is step two of the more method, which is um, blocking in. Um, I'm just, as you can see, I'm just getting colour down the canvas um, and uh, understanding how to create a composition um, and create aerial perspective in your painting as well. Really important. Um, but in this particular painting, we just want to create a bit of mist and, and so on happening in the background. However, what we want to do is we want to get this foreground in something it has a chance to dry, um, which it will, before we move to uh, the detailing and so on. So what I'm going to do is add um, some alizarin crimson there, and some yellow ochre. So these are our three earthy primary colours, red, yellow, blue. <coughs> Now, one thing that's really important with acrylics as opposed to oils is, I mean, oils, I hardly ever clean my brush. In acrylics, 
I clean the brush quite a bit and dry. Okay, dry the brush. Don't need water on there. You don't need to thin out acrylics. Okay. So take some of this blue here, take some yellow, take some red, mix those together. Maybe get a bit more red. Okay, and we'll put that into our foreground closest part here. So warm colours, if you've been with us for a while, you'll, you'll have heard me say this before, warm colours come forward, cool colours recede into the distance. Hence the blue and the red. That's how you create aerial perspective in your painting. Okay, now I'm just, this is just an undertone, I'm just blocking in here. We will come back and we will um, we'll work on this as we progress the painting, but I just want to get this in for now, just to um, get that to dry off. Okay, so now I don't want to go into the same tone here because I want to create a bit of depth there. But I still want to get a dark in there, right? Just to make it a bit more interesting. Just a blue just come out there. Enjoying our uh, paintings, make sure you like our YouTube channel and um, you know, subscribe, like the paint, uh, the video actually, and, and subscribe um, to our channel. And that way you'll get notified when we've got new paintings and so on, new videos coming out, new uh, live streams like this one. We'll sort of blend those two together. Okay, now so far, everything I've done, you can do this at home, right? It is designed for beginners to be able to create this painting. Um, it's easy to do, very simple, simple colours, simple approach, big brush, getting that paint down. You can do this at home. That's no, nothing that I've done that you can't do. Okay, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to get some more white paint. So hopefully that will all dry off by the time we, um, we finish this background here. Well, not hopefully, it will all dry off. So we'll get some more of that white paint. And now what we're gonna do is just put in some background trees and foliage, okay? So background trees and foliage, we want, we want it to look like it's in the mist, you know, in the fog. And it's just gotta be slightly darker than that tone there. Okay, so we just get a bit of, a bit more white and blue. Okay, mix that up. And a bit more blue in there. So we want to see these trees, but we don't want them to be dominant in the um, in the painting. So if you have a look at that, that, that's barely visible, right? That's okay. I'll do a few that are barely there. Against that white there, it's going to be... Ooh, once we get up to the higher part there, you can't even see it. So I think I'll add in a bit more blue. Now, probably gone a bit too far the other way, but let's give it a try. Okay. And I'm just using the flat brush. Just um, a lot of this is going to be covered by our main trees as well. So don't fuss too much with this. You don't, don't have to paint perfect trees. This is just really going to be sitting in the background. Um, where am I? Oh, over here. Okay. We'll lean a few in this way. Starting to get a f quite a few in there at the moment. Um, we don't want to have too many more. That one there, the same. Okay, a few there. Now, again, everything I've done so far, very easy 
for you to do at home, right? This is not difficult to do. So have a go at it, you know? I'm all about inspiring beginners to have a go, you know, get started painting it. So it's such a great, uh, fun, and um, once you understand there's a few basic steps, then it, you know, it does become easy. So let's just try getting some distant foliage in here. Again, we're not looking for perfection here. This is largely going to be covered up. And it's getting just this paint underneath is just a little bit tacky, so um, don't try and work too much into it. By, you know, by going over and over it. I mean, um, just pop your paint on and then move on to another spot when the, when the other paint's a bit tacky, like it is at the moment. So we're just doing little gum trees here. So the gum tree foliage is typically, um, just has this soft sort of umbrella, mushroomy sort of shape. made any mistakes with your tree trunks so you can cover them up with foliage okay it's always a handy thing to to realize okay so there we go got a bit of a background happening there and um, that will all dry off in time now hopefully you're seeing that on the video um, the lighting is not great in here this is the last live stream that we're doing from this location um, and there won't be a live stream next week because I will be moving. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now, we just want to just ever so slightly go slightly darker and a little bit greener in just a couple of spots. Okay. Just to bring a few forward. It's all about creating that illusion of depth in the painting. So hopefully this will be a little bit darker here. And what I'm going to do is just, yeah, there you go. See, that's a bit greener. It's a little bit darker. So this is sort of representing a, um, a tree that's a bit closer. And um, sort of closer to us out of the fog. There's what we're doing there. One, one in that corner. Um, I'll do a little bit around here. Cut off the base of that one. And a little bit there. So, you know, again, this is really easy to do. Anyone can do this. that brush and drop dry it out so um what I'm gonna do I, I think the background here is maybe not so visible because of the light so I'll bring it forward so you can see what I've done in the background there I put these very light uh, colored trees in there and when we put like a big strong trees here with you know more vibrant colors um, it's going to make these sit right back in the distance and then we're going to obviously put some grasses and things in the uh, the foreground area here, okay? So if you're joining us on the live stream, let us know where you're watching us from, whereabouts in the world you are. Um, I haven't really publicized these live streams just yet um, until I move to the new studio where I'll have better lighting and better audio and so on. Uh, but if you are joining us, let us know. I'd love to hear where you're from. You can use the chat section there and um, what I'm doing at the moment is just delaying to give this a little bit of time to dry um, but we'll have a go at it we'll see how we go so what we're going to need is a bit more blue more blue there and I need to make sure that our Um, brush is nice and dry. So we've got three main trees. 
One's going to sit into here, one's going to start about there, and then we're going to have one that comes out through there. So, all we need is dark. Okay. So we'll just mix up that dark there. Try and keep the um, keep the light, you know, the white and stuff out of it at this stage. Plenty of paint. Don't be skimpy. If you want to use acrylics like their oils, then use um, plenty of paint with them. Okay. So I'm going to start this one about here. Blind it in that way. So you can see I'm losing some of those trees. That's why I, don't, I didn't just want to spend too much time um, on those background trees when I was doing them because I knew that they wouldn't last long, some of them. Okay. Just using the one inch brush here and we'll just bring that down to there, like so. And we'll run up one large branch there. Just a touch wider through here. So don't make these three gum trees all the same width. Now, you know, I'm doing gum trees. You could be doing any tree that's in your local woods, you know, basically. Um, but don't make the three main ones that we're about to do the same width. Very important. And also don't finish them at the same plane here. Um, so I need to really bring this one down a little bit lower because this is our main gum tree. I'm going to bring it down so that it finishes um, around about there. Okay. So that's just blocked in the dark side of it there. So now let's have a go at our next one, which basically runs through there you can see that the underpainting is not yet dry so what you could have done is before you tackled this part um, you could have gone and had a 15 minute break made yourself a nice cuppa um, and when you come back it would have been dry or you could have picked up a hairdryer and uh, just give it a, a quick squirt you know being acrylic it'll be dry in a few minutes um, Taking just a touch longer than probably normal because I'm using a lot of paint. And the reason why I'm using a lot of paint is to keep, to give myself more time to work with it. Okay, so you can already see that we've got the, um, these blue trees in the distance, they're already sitting back nicely to the background now. Okay. More paint. And this one here is going to come from here and it's going to go over that clump of bushes there. Finish up around about there. With this one, I think we might just run up another branch up that way. Okay, I think that's coming along reasonably well. A little bit more blue paint, just strengthen up some of those darks there.
fiddling a bit there now, so I'm going to stop doing that. I sometimes find myself fiddling, which uh, is a bit of a bad habit, unfortunately. So I'll stop that and clean off the brush. Clean off the brush. rinsing the brush out in some water and giving it a clean with some paper towel. Okay. Now, as I said before, 90% you know, of the painting is done with my ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson and yellow ochre. Um, I also will add some cadmium yellow just to really pick up uh, give it a bit more punch in some of the highlight colours um, when needed. So I'll just pop some of that out over there. Chances are good I probably won't need that white again, although maybe just a little bit. And a touch more blue. What I'm going to do now is um, give everything a chance to dry off. I'll, probably our driest area is going to be the grassy area here. So I'm going to just work on some of that. Okay. Now, if we have a look at our painting that we're doing, this is probably our brightest grass colour right there. It's a little bit duller through the back. So we'll start off with a duller tone and um, we'll brighten it up as we go. So I'll start off with blue, yellow ochre, and just a little bit of the cadmium yellow. That's quite strong, that cadmium yellow. Mix that up. And there's already white in here, so I'm not going to lighten it with any extra white. So there's a bit of a, gr a dull green grassy colour. And we'll just start off... <laughs> Dog next door's having a good old bark. I'm not sure what he's uh, barking at, but... I'm sure it's important to him. Getting some grassy stuff. Break a few you know, bits of grass up over the edge of the hill there. red in there which will grey it back. Okay, a bit bluer, another pinch of red, a bit bluer. Okay, that's a bit better. That's more like what I'm looking for. Okay. So just in here, just gonna do a variety of brush strokes up and down and side to side there. Here, I'm going to flick up some uh, other grasses and so on. Put a little bit of a highlight area there. But leave, leave it sort of darky in the valley there. Okay. And then we'll come over. And we're going to brighten it up now. Quite a bit of paint there. Brighten it up. And we're going to come and... Be careful you don't use too much paint. I've got a fair bit of paint on the brush. Now we want the effect of the sun clipping along the top of this um, little ridge here. And that creates a nice separation from that distant From 
this section in here. Now what we can do is just pick up a couple of little spots, brighten them up in the distance here. So too much paint there. I don't, you've got to be careful with acrylics that you don't get clumpy sort of paint. Well, you've got to be careful with uh, oils as well. Just a few little highlighty parts. I don't think it will hurt through there. But don't overdo it. You know, you want your brightest brights to be in the foreground part of the hill there. Okay. So, uh, just blew it back a little bit as we come a bit lower here. Starting to work there. And I'm going to just grab it back a bit like we did before. And through here. Always paint like in the direction that the land runs because that way. Um, it will create the effect that the land's running down the hill there. Get up around the base of that tree. Mix in a little bit more of the dark in there. Oop, clip the white somehow. And again, leave some of that undertone, that nice red shining through, um, that earthy color. I think it's uh, you know, a good thing to leave in there. But the good thing about these brushes is you, if you sort of scrumble up the edge, like so, see how it gets all blistered out like that? Um, just push it against, that's why I've got this big board here to sort of clean my brush and to push it out. And then I can pick up some of this yellow ochre here, touch of the yellow, the bright yellow, touch of the white. Okay. And just make sure it's not clumped in the end of the brush, which it is a little bit. So I'll take some of that paint out and then I can just put in the effects of like grass growing there, or gathering in around the base of that tree. So I'll just scruff it up a bit. That's the beauty of this, um, these gesso brushes is that they're quite versatile, you know. You can get the paint on really quickly, as you've seen me do earlier. And um, you can also create some nice grassy effects. So I could, if I wanted to, there's some nice green there. I could just use it just to flick up some grasses around there. Okay. Got to sort of imagine what would you see in the forest there. Okay. And one thing I think we need here is to get our brightest bright. Oh, we'll pick up a little bit of blue. That's okay. And we're just going to just clip it in here and there. I really got that sunlight hitting in there now. Pop my brush back in the water. And um, it's all going along okay. Quite tacky in there. Smudge some of that out. So you can see all I'm really doing here is just following along with this one. I'm just doing a version of it. I'm not trying to copy it exactly. Um, that would
be too hard to copy it exactly. I'm just trying to create my own version of that on, on here, using this as a bit of a reference point. So that's what you want to do at home. You know, the reason why we do these live streaming classes is so that you can see projects like this and then go, you know what, I'm going to have a go at that and, and really, uh, you know, study the steps that I've shown you, use the same colors, same brushes, and um, have a go. Because you might find that actually a lot easier than, than what you first thought. Okay. And part of the reason why I'm babbling on here is because there's quite a bit of wet paint up in here that I'm hoping will dry. <laughs> it's probably not going to, so I'll push on. Um, but just before I do, if you're watching the replay of this video, then up in this corner, if you hover your mouse over there, there's a little eye. If you click on that, it'll then give you a couple of different ways that you can um, interact with us. One is we offer a free video painting course. Um, so there'll be a, a little card there that'll show you how to get access to that free video painting course. where well, you're gonna learn all the basics about painting and the more method of painting. And you know, I've taught hundreds of students in workshops one-on-one -on -one, um, and thousands online with the more method of painting. And the reason why I created the more method of painting is the simplest and easiest way for anybody to get started painting. So click up there, get the free video course, and you can also, from that spot up there, you can access um, the page on our website where you can get notified about future live stream events. So have a look at that as well. Um, and I'll also put everything underneath the uh, painting in the description. I'll put links to the various ways that you can sort of interact with us. But what I'd love is, um, you know, if you like this painting, like it, uh, this video, or ask questions in the comments or make comments. I'm, I really want to interact with you guys and find out what you like. You know, do you like this style of painting or do you want to do a different type of painting? Let me know because I want to do these live stream events on a regular basis as well. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think and what questions you have and so I'm here to help, okay? So, I think what we'll do is we'll do some foliage for the main trees now. Um, I'm just looking at that. I think we can pretty much get away with it. Uh, with where it's at at the moment. So let's give that a go. Let's give that brush a clean. Now with the foliage, we've got uh, to do the dark first and then the light, okay? The light's gonna be coming from over here. So our dark, <coughs> so this is our darks here. Okay, so we're gonna pick up our red, blue, and yellow. Okay. We'll just push this slightly to the dark green side, I think, today, just for the fun of it. Okay, like so. Using the uh, one inch gesso brush, and where have we got foliage? So, you're just gonna have to be careful about how you touch this on because if it's still a bit wet, if you're doing this at home, what I'd recommend is don't do this part until you've had a, you know, a bit of a cup of coffee or tea or whatever, depending on which part of the world you're in, I suppose. Um, don't don't do this while the paint's tacky like I'm doing right now, unless you're an experienced painter and you've done a lot of paintings in uh, acrylics before and you understand what you can get away with and what you can't. Okay, um, there's always a way, and I guess this is what I'm wet painting for those of you who are Bob Ross. Bill Alexander fans, which is how I started out. Um, but then what I'm doing here is wet on wet with acrylics, effectively. Got some bush turkeys just arrived outside my garage door. I can hear them scratching around out in the garden there, and making noises. Okay. to me and not so interesting to you. Okay, get some coming in this way. So because these are gum trees, they're just little mushroom shape, umbrella shapes. If you're doing a different type of tree, or if you're already coming out there, it's nice. Um, then you might need to shape these a little bit differently to suit whatever tree you're wanting to do. And you know, if you're doing a different tree, then you know you would shape these differently. Obviously, is what I was saying. So now let's get a bit of highlight into that. So this is back into our greens now. I'm gonna 
Gonna go for a full highlight just yet. Get a little bit of red in there. A bit more yellow ochre. Okay, and you don't want to lose that dark that we just put in there. And just be careful you don't turn it in the mud because there's quite a bit of wet paint on there at the moment. So don't overwork it is the key. Overwork it, then it will certainly turn in the mud. When I started out teaching, I was teaching when I'm wet with oils in my classes, and uh, just found some of the students were struggling with the oils, so I switched to acrylics in the classes, and it was certainly a good move. The students, um got better results um, and but the thing was they were still learning how they could apply the same techniques um, if you were doing it in oil switch back to my flat brush and put some white some yellow So, just start to highlight the side of the tree where the light's going to be hitting. It's starting to work, it's starting to come along. I'll just tone it back a bit. Like so.
having trouble with the flat brush actually getting into the edge there. So I'm going to come back with my um, little script liner brush to make sure we get that there. What I'm doing now is I'm really just finessing, fine tuning. Things to get them to work. So, you know, for the purpose of doing this demonstration, I'm not going to fusk too much you could spend more time at home on this I hope you do and send me a picture of how you've gone with it it's a great little painting very effective it's the sort of painting that um, because of the misty sort of background people look at it and go wow how'd you do that you know they're always really impressed with it so time now time now for us to move to A little uh, little script liner brush it doesn't have a lot of hair on it, so yeah, that's probably not going to work very well. I don't think. Get some very fine lines on it, so it's probably not going to satisfy us completely. Let me find something else. That's the one I'm looking for. So I've just got another little one here that I've found. Pick up some of this dark. Make sure you load the brush correctly so I've pulled it to a point. Yeah, it's not ideal anyway. Bringing a few little twigs and branches and things. <coughs> I shall put one right through here. And we'll put in some fence posts. Make sure these pop out into a light section here. No point putting them against the dark. Rustic looking. If you do have one against the dark, then we'll just make sure we highlight it properly. Okay. And then 
and smaller in the background here. Not the best script liner brush, unfortunately. Not that happy with it. Kind of making it a little bit challenging. Okay, now we can come back to our foliage. Back to our foliage here. We're going to take a big chunk of that yellow, touch of the red, where we've got a yellow ochre I can find in there, just mix it in slightly, just a bit more of that yellow in. Okay. That's probably around about the tongue line right there. And we are just going to work it in where the sun's clipping the tops of that. Should have gone out too much paint on there. Dry brush, I'll just move some of that paint around. Very good, and last little thing. This white, like so, and just pop some highlight. And we'll probably go even more wider than that. Just thinking I might just pick up the highlight. Little bit carried away in there. That's all right. Let's give it some dark. Make it up a bit in that section. No worry.
super, super dry brush. There a bit. Just to make it a bit dark. Just work a bit of dark back into this foliage. It's a little bit clumpy for me at the moment. And if I can just knock back a few spots, I'll be happier. So there you go, that's our uh, painting today. Great little painting, easy one for you to have a go at at home. Um, just remember the three steps that we did. We did our initial drawing, step one, just getting those hills in and a couple of marks for where the trees were gonna go. Um, step two, we started to block in, so we used a nice light white with titanium blue, whoops, um, and did all that sort of misty background. And then we blocked in the foreground with the darks, bit warmer, bit cooler. Then we started blocking in our trees, and then the rest of it was just highlighting. You saw me you know, adding in these warmer colors here, a bit duller at the back, highlighting the trees and the foliage. This is something you can do at home, right? It's not that difficult. Ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and yellow ochre, and we added in cadmium yellow as a punch color, and of course, titanium white. So it's a simple painting, it's easy to do. Um, you know, That's the one I was working off, and I think as a demo, this one's come up reasonably well bit more time and care I could you know really polish that up um, but hopefully today though you've got a bit of an insight into an easy acrylic painting that you can do and do it in a way that's sort of like you know painting with oils you know you don't have to use uh, acrylics in a watercolor -y way you can still use them in the same process that you would with oils and hopefully you've seen that today um, top corner of the screen here if you hover over there you'll click on the little eye you can get access to our free video course. You can also register to get notifications about our live stream painting classes like this one. So please do that. Um, like this video, subscribe to our channel and leave a comment underneath this video. We'd love to hear from you. Ask questions about the painting um, or painting in general or tell us what you think or let us know what sort of painting projects we want to do in the future. I'm always open to ideas. But for now, thanks for tuning in. Um, happy painting and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.